Let's go! Pass Defense Week Part 3. We continue today talking about the slot corner position and uh, Cordell Flott. Once again, he doesn't have a lot of fans on this channel, but today I'm actually going to kind of sort of defend Cordell Flott um, because, yes, he did have a rough season, but there were so many outside factors that played a huge role as to why this guy struggled. A big thing, and, and we've been discussing this on live streams, you remember this bomb touchdown uh, to Devonta Smith, and of course Cordell Flott was in coverage. But So yes, it is so easy to pick on Cordell Flott, but then you get to this replay here, and the biggest issue for me was that, yes, he actually got a jam here, which is actually good, but like we discussed in our film study yesterday... LSU did not play their safeties deep enough, enough of the time. And also something else, jam here, but this was really the main issue for Cordell Flott last season. Yes, he did get burnt. Yes, it wasn't the absolute best, but he and Derek Stingley Jr. just ran into each other so often because LSU never shifted out of man coverage. A lot of you guys remember the Mississippi State game, but then this just continued, LSU's lack of adjustments on defense. And what happened here on this play is, you see here, Devonta Smith actually goes to run into Derek Stingley Jr., which then opens up John Mechie, and then Stingley is now having to switch off here on Flott, he trips up Derek Stingley Jr. This was something Devonta Smith was so good at as a wide receiver, getting you off balanced. So on this play, yes, Cordell Flack got beat deep, but some of this was because he had to run into Derek Stingley Jr. threw his timing off after his initial jam, and Devonta Smith was able to walk into the end zone. And guess what? That's how LSU gave up their first long touchdown to Arkansas and Traylon Burks because, once again, the communication between Derek Stingley Jr. and Cordell Flott was not that great. Now, I'm not going to break down that play because we've actually already done a few breakdowns of that play. So, yeah, um, it, it, it's an issue. But, of course, uh, Cordell Flott's just simply going to have to get than the Auburn game. And what I'm going to show you here isn't necessarily a bust on uh, Cordell Flott's part. This was actually a uh, a bust here by everybody. Okay, so it's first and goal. TJ Finley uh, just threw an interception. And you see here, here's an easy throw. An easy touchdown here. Cordell Flott getting blocked uh, pretty badly. Mo Hampton misses a bad tackle here. We honestly didn't even hit this guy, and he was able to get into the end zone for a touchdown. Now let's take a look at the replay here, okay? So what you'll see here is from the start, all right? And you've heard Devon, uh, Devon, you've heard Durante Jones talk about communication. So you notice here, Cordell Flott is talking to Derek, I say Derek, Elias Ricks here, trying to get everything lined up. It is really hard to play the game of football when you're doing a lot of this. And LSU, I was doing a lot of this because there was just too much thinking that had to go into the defense. Things are moving fast, and with all the pre-snap motion that's in football now, you've really got to simplify not only your coverages, but your line play as well on defense. But anyway, uh, this starts off here with uh, Smoke Monday going into motion, okay? Now, we're trying to figure out, as Cordell Flott is pointing to this area, he's pointing to an area uh, where a wide receiver is no longer even there, okay? We're still trying to figure out who's supposed to go where. Now Mo Hampton is communicating. Now Jabril Cox is telling Devon Clark, who's picking up this motion man? All right, now Cordell Flott is looking at Elias Ricks and telling Elias Ricks, hey, this isn't where you're supposed to be. We need you running over here with Smoke Monday. So what happens here pre-snap 
is Elias Ricks's man is supposed to be number 12 here, Smoke Monday. I believe this is Smoke. No, this is uh, Eli Stove. I don't know. I don't remember his name. But either way, Elias Ricks loses him because, you see, all this Auburn Navy, he can't find him. He goes. He was in motion here. He motioned here. But what happens here, you see Ricks, he's looking for him. He motions back to where he initially was for a little slip route. And once again, you, we told you uh, in yesterday's film study, LSU always had a numbers issue with defenses, uh, with their defense, where too many guys were on one side of the formation, and all teams would do would go to the other side of the formation. So look at this. Just by play design and lack of communication, there's two guys that are being blocked by two guys, and it's basically just a foot race here. In fact, Bo Nix probably could have just ran this with the lead blocker. This is just really bad defense all around, and it's an easy throw. And you see Eli Ricks is still back over here. He was like, wait, he motioned here, motioned back. And you see it's just so much going on here and actually Cordell Flott did a good job forcing this back inside to the safety Mo Hampton who had an awful season misses this tackle good job by Eli Ricks to hustle back but he still scores now all right here we go in the red zone again 45 seconds left to go at second and one let's at least force them to kick a field goal here but watch this action right here okay all this is is a pick play, and this is what we don't want. We don't want to give up free touchdowns, and that's all this is. Run right into them. Simple pick. Maybe that's a flag. I don't know. They hardly ever call that, and then it's an easy touchdown. And once again, think about Cordell Flott in this situation, right? And I understand we only think of defensive backs is just guarding one guy but if you're in the slot and this consistently happens that's always in the back of your head if you're playing coverage in the slot knowing that you can get picked um, from a tight end coming this way or a wide receiver coming this way it's really hard to play coverage and I think that's a big reason why Cordell Flott was so much better last season because he did not, in 2019, Dave Veranda didn't put him in spots such as this one where, you know, he was having to think at all times and sprint, uh, you know, a, a marathon before every snap. It, it just puts a lot of stress on you defensively. And here's a replay here for you once again. Th th what, what is Cordell Flott supposed to do about this? Okay. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, well, what, what can you do about it? Well, it's kind of hard, right? Um, what what some D-back coaches would tell you is these guys shouldn't be lined up this close. One corner should be back just a little to prevent this from happening. Um, I reached out to a former NFL defense back, and that was one of the things he told me uh, regarding stuff like this. But like we said, we go back to the Arkansas play um, where – Flight was back here, and this was actually Stingley, and they still bumped into each other. So it's an issue. It's a complicated issue. It's not an easy issue to fix. This is hap, and you guys are watching this at point two five speed. You know, it, it's it's hard. It's really hard to to process this information. So this was a bad miss. I believe this one was on Cordell Flott. So it's third and six. We got a good play from B.J. Ojolari on. Second down, and then on first down, we had a really nice tackle by Todd Harris. Uh, so what you'll see here is pre-snap, it's third and six. We're down by 18. We've got to make a stop here to get back into this game. We really can't give up any more points. So Seth Williams get in, gets into motion, and Seth had been just destroying us all game. And you notice we do get some communication here, okay? They cut their hands like this. Okay, so they're communicating. This is good. Okay, so we check into something. And what I think this check actually was and was to say that whoever runs this way, I pick him up. Whoever runs this way, me, Derek Stingley, will pick him up. And Cordell, you get anyone that goes up the middle. Okay, 
But you notice what happens here. It's kind of hard to see from this angle. But we'll show you a different angle in a bit. We give up a very easy first down. And I know it's blurry and super slow motion like this. At least Cordell Flott makes this tackle right here. I think, no, it was actually Todd Harris. Now, so, this guy's going to the outside. Stingley picks up this guy. And Cordell Flott should be picking up this guy, according to this coverage game. But, after Cordell Flott looks at this interior wide receiver, he looks at him. You see, he's looking at him. He still decides to run with them, which doesn't make any sense because he knows that they're the only three corners on this side of the field because he knows Todd Harris is playing really high, single high. So you know you 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 essentially got to lock this guy up right here. But no, he runs with him, and here's the sad thing about it. Wide open, we're essentially giving up this first down, just easy pitch and catch. And if we were playing decent coverage, Bo Nix would have had to force a ball into tight coverage or he would have been sacked because we called the perfect blitz, which coincides with exactly what we talked about in part one. And I cannot say it enough. Go watch part one and part two because it's so important uh, to really understand part three if you watched both of those. And we never adjusted to this, right? And Alabama probably saw this film and said, look, let's base our entire passing attack on knowing that these two are just going to keep running into each other. Or they're going to keep playing man coverage. We're going to run them ragged with motion. And you see what happens here. This is kind of like what we talked about uh, on live streams is essentially this wide receiver, number five, is blocking two people. If Gus Malzahn knows you're playing hardcore man coverage for the entire game what he's going to do is he since he knows Derek Stingley is going to lock in he knows that he can throw this ball behind the line of scrimmage and right when this ball is caught it is legal to block this player and that is essentially what happens the timing of this is great or I think you can block if it's still thrown behind the line of scrimmage I don't know the exact rule but still Look at the timing on it. Right when he catches it, you're blocking, and you see he's essentially blocking two guys, okay? Now, all LSU had to do to prevent this from consistently happening is just to, a few times, run cover two or run a zone blitz, do something, but no. So these are all things Durante Jones is going to have to consider about Cordell Flott in his slot position. And whenever you sit down and watch more, yes, you do see Cordell Flott getting beat. All DBs get beat. It's you Honestly, you do begin to feel a little sympathetic for him because all this communication, all this stuff, it, it's, it's really, really hard to keep up with. I have a few more thoughts on Cordell Flott, but let's just say he's not the slot, right? Uh, who could potentially play that position because a lot of you want someone else to play that spot so Dwight McLaughlin was the corner who did the most for himself this spring he was really good in the spring game but of course that was him playing the outside corner position because we did not have a healthy Eli Ricks and can Dwight McLaughlin play the slot I actually went back and watched his slot reps versus Florida once again he's going up against Kadarius Tony, but still uh he's better on the outside than he is at the slot corner position obviously that is a very limited sample but but still I view him more as an outside corner major burns is a transfer who comes over from Georgia I don't know if LSU views him more as a safety or a corner right now I honestly don't know if LSU knows too much about major burns ability because well he didn't play much DB last year in a loaded Georgia secondary so he comes over after one season, he was an initially an LSU commit. How does he fit into the secondary? I don't know. Is he going to be ready to play uh, in, on, on day one? 
I don't know. And I'm actually going to tie Major Burns into another new name. And that new name is uh, Quentin Cage. And I'm also going to throw in Darren Evans here. They're both transfers from Nichols. Now, Darren Evans is on scholarship. He came over um, before the 2020 season. He played some, and it was kind of sort of rough for him. And then, of course, you have Quentin Cage, who is a walk-on for LSU. He played for Nichols last season, and uh, quite simply, he balled out. I mean, it, legit, his tape is amazing, and it makes sense. He went to Rummel, and Rummel just produces beasts that oftentimes outproduce their recruiting rankings. So, uh, you know, of the two, obviously, Quentin Cage excites more of you. I've gotten quite a few comments about Pig Cage. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it should be interesting to see how both of them fit in. I think Quentin Cage is more of a nickel type, and Darren Evans is a little bit more of an outside corner type. I will want to include this note. I, I did find this interesting that Quentin Cage and Major Burns, they did not have a profile on the official roster of LSU. Now, once again, that I, I don't that doesn't mean anything. They could be on the roster and their name's just not listed. It could be a mistake. But the LSU roster is the most official ledger we have of who's on the roster and who's not. Hopefully those two are on the roster next season because it's hard to not get excited uh, about Major Burns and Quentin Pig Cage. So now we get to the freshmen, Matthew Langlois, Derek Davis Jr., and Demarius McGee. Uh, it's going to be hard for any of those three to really see the field next season. But the guy that has generated the most buzz is five-star Sage Ryan. Okay, so... Here's the interesting thing about Sage. You look at the last two seasons, LSU's five-star defensive backs have not only played as true freshmen, they were exceptional. So hopefully Sage Ryan continues that trend. LSU, even beyond that, has had a history of five-star DVs being able to help out right away. So Sage Ryan will get his opportunity to, at the very least, play on special teams and get some defensive snaps. Now, is that at safety or is it at this slot corner position? Well, we don't know, and I honestly don't know if LSU really knows right now because Sage Ryan, of course, is coming off an injury. At LCA, he didn't play his final few games. They were still able to win the state championship, but he didn't play all that much, and that is a lower level of competition. He also played offense, so, you know, obviously, I think he's really good. I think he will um, live up to expectations, but can he be... Derek Stingley and Elias Ricks good that's going to be so freaking hard to do but if he is to play as a true freshman that slot corner position I think is the one uh, that he could definitely play and then you have a, a deep cut here Ray Darius Jones is a name that's been in the program for quite some time but now as we always like to do we're going to give you some outside the box ideas here how about Eli Ricks? Okay, so we did the Eli Ricks pick six versus Florida film study, and Eli Ricks made that pick six from the slot corner position, and that was very interesting. He's got amazing ball skills. Uh, he's got some physicality and some nasty to his game. Obviously, that is different than playing outside corner. Is that something that uh, would interest Eli Ricks playing the slot full time? I don't know. Because as we mentioned, they are two, diabol the, 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 two diabolically different positions. So yeah, you know, Eli Ricks could definitely do it. I just don't think Corey Raymond and Durante Jones would want to bump him inside since he's so dominant on the outside. But I could easily see a scenario where he's playing a lot of slot. Especially if LSU decides to go with Demarius McGee, uh, Demarius McGee Dwight McLaughlin at the slot. Because if they do go with McLaughlin... I don't think they're going to want to keep McLaughlin there full-time. I think they'll move those guys around uh, quite a bit if McLaughlin is the one that finds his way on the starters field. Boom, if you made it this far, I'm actually going to give you a bonus clip. The guy who I actually think would be the best slot corner on this team is a guy who wouldn't even get an opportunity. <laughs> and that is Jay Ward. And I want to show you this rep against Florida right here. It's unbelievable. <laughs> now, watch it one more time. Still a 0-0 ball game, 14-14 left to go. Here he is going up against Kadarius Toney. 
And as many of you know, you guys saw in yesterday's film study, Kadarius Tony was absolutely ridiculous. Okay? He's so fast, so twitchy, and Jay Ward even has safety help over the top. Now, I, I've shared this before. I, I, I totally missed on Mo Hampton. He had such a, a rough season, and this was another example of it. We're trying to give safety help over the top. So Jay Ward thinks Mo Hampton's going to be able to help him over the top. Guess what? Mo Hampton can't. He gets burned. And look, Kyle Trask is just waiting. For this, for this to get open. And we're beat here. Okay? But look at the recovery speed by Jay Ward here. Okay? Look, this ball isn't even out of Trask's... Trask's... It's not even out of his hands yet. And Jay Ward, after getting beat right here, does not give up and is still sprinting, turns his head... That is amazing. There's so many DBs that don't have this ability uh, to turn their heads in time. This is something that Dwight McLaughlin struggles with. But he turns his head to locate the football. It's not the absolute best throw a little behind. But notice he just all ball, no interference. Maybe try Jay Ward there and put someone else. At safety, maybe that's where say Dryan or Matthew Lingua or Derek Davis Jr. Uh, could play, and then you you bump Jay Ward down to the slot, and you'll see a, uh, obviously here on this better angle. Look at this! Look at this! Kadarius Tony is an elite athlete. That's amazing. That is elite ball skills, slot corner play, all that stuff right there. So. Uh, Jay Ward's actually my, my number one candidate there, and uh, obviously they're, they're going to put him at safety. Now, um, and, and I'm fine with that. If Jay Ward is the answer at safety, the, roll with it, since he's already been working there and he's got some chemistry now with Todd Harris. But I want to talk about Cordell Flott here. Because Jay Ward is not going to actually move, I am totally fine with Cordell Flott getting his starter's job back. You guys saw this film study today. Yes, there were times Cordell Flott just flat out got beat, and that is obviously not acceptable, right? I mean, there's only so many times you can get beat, but the scheme did him no favors, and you can argue when you consistently play man coverage, the slot is the hardest position to play when the other team knows what you're going to do, when they're constantly picking you over the middle, when you're playing man coverage, and normally if you are playing man coverage in the slot, the guy more often than not that's going to go into motion is who? The slot wide receiver. So if the slot wide receiver goes into motion, that means that Cordell Flott, if he's in man coverage following him, is sprinting back and forth 20, 15, 20 yards before the play even begins. It, it's a lot. It, it's, it can be tiring. It can be exhausting. It could be mentally strenuating, as you guys saw a little bit earlier, when you never run zone defense. So, obviously, that's not what LSU is going to do next season, okay? So, number one, that was really hard on Cordell Flott. Number two, and this is very important as well, the wide receivers he's going to face next season is not going to be nearly as difficult as the ones he faced last year, okay? So, he faced Trey Burks in the slot. He faced uh, Devonta Smith. He faced Kadarius Toney. If Elijah Moore would have played, he would have played Elijah Moore. Every guy that we just named will be a longtime NFL Pro Bowl level player or an NFL Pro. Then he also played Mississippi State, which is just constant drag routes, which is constant man coverage, which is a horrible thing. And then you guys saw earlier Schwartz and Stowe for Auburn. They're no slouches either. Yes, the SEC is still going to be loaded with wide receivers and great quarterbacks, but they're, they're not going to be as good as what Cordell Flott faced last season. So he's going to get better coaching. He's going to be more experienced. He's going to hopefully, and, and a lot of this falls on Derek Singley as well, he's going to have better communication with Derek Singley Jr. The two of them are good friends, so that's obviously going to help him out uh, as well. And uh, with all of that, and hopefully his confidence is back, he should be better just by default. Just And, and honestly, I, I do feel this way because that was like a lot of you. I was like, God, Cordell Flott is getting beat a lot. 
But when you don't have all 22 and you're watching the game live, it can kind of, you, you know, just get ingrained in your mind that a, a lot of the fault was at Flot when the fault was at the system. Now, that doesn't absolve from Colonial Flot uh, playing better. He absolutely needs to play better back to his 2019 form. And if he does, this LSU defense should be pretty good. So, obviously, in the comment section, I'm going to need your help, guys. Uh, let me know what, what you guys think about uh, the pot potential slot position. I know a lot of you are high on Sage Ryan. And uh, it is pass defense week. Uh, part one and part two is currently floating in your face right now. We also got an Elias Ricks film study. If you want to see how the pick six actually happened, that is linked down below. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom! Oh, we're doing Garlic Parm Sam and Liz. Go! <laughs>